Hello everybody, this is Howard the Teaser King coming to you with week 9 of college football. Had a huge week last week in everything. Um, I think I ended up 13-3 and three or 12-3 and three in college and I think 7-2 and two in the pros, so it was just a huge week. Um, I missed uh, a couple of games in college. I hit my 15 star UCF South Florida. I then hit UCF and Penn State for an 11 star. And then I missed the uh, Utah and West Virginia 11 star. So overall it was, it was an outstanding week. I hit all my other games, my regular games. Um, winning with teams like Iowa State, Ohio over, uh, uh, what was they playing, Bowling Green or or Miami or some Miami of Ohio. Uh, just a wonderful week. Everything went through. All my methods are working. I'm up to about seven or eight methods I'm looking at. The score, the you know, the home favorite, home dog trend and method and uh, who needs the game and all that kind of stuff. And um, I just love the Penn State game. Um, that was not, not a bad call. I said they'd win by 27. They win by 29, and I don't know how Michigan scored 13 to tell you the truth, but I like how Penn State fought back. Um, they really shredded Michigan's defense. And I know Michigan, it's not really Michigan as much as Penn State is that good. When you have balance, when you have a quarterback who can throw it well, when you have good running, and a running quarterback, I don't care who you have on defense, how are you going to stop that? And that was my point. Michigan hadn't shut out anybody, so therefore they're giving up 14 to Cincinnati, who's terrible. So you have a lot of, uh, you know, I knew Penn State was going to get in the 20s at least, um, and Michigan can't score. But that's, you know, and you can't blame Harbaugh. You don't have a quarterback. The only blame you can put to Harbaugh is, well, where's the quarterback? You've been there three years. Where's the quarterback? Why? Even if you didn't have one in year one and you had one in year two and you redshirted him and now he's a freshman, that's still two years in, you can't play this senior game. Well, I'm going to play the senior over the freshman. Um, you know, maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know, but you'd think he'd have got a quarterback in three years that could play. He started luck as a freshman, so there's really no – Excuse, but that just shows you how important the quarterback position is, because um, Michigan's starting to get some running backs going. But I don't know what's wrong. Their defense has been great, and Harbaugh is really a defensive coach. He had a strong defense at Stanford and very strong defense at the 49ers. Um, but let's not forget, it's you know uh, he's still an outstanding coach. Um, they lost, but, I mean, they're not the first team to lose to a team like Penn State this year. So, anyway, so that's what's happening. Uh, nothing new on the site. Uh, one quick note, it does go Tuesday to Monday is my week. Um, I go along with the flow of the week, right? So it's week nine until it turns week 10 on Tuesday, and that's how I, I follow that path. Uh, just an FYI. Um, this week, college is loaded. I've already posted two locks, one another 15 unit lock and an 11 unit lock. I love the 15 unit lock. Um, I love the 11 unit lock, but I really love the 15. That's one thing you gotta keep in mind is is watch the you gotta watch the, the the strength of the play, and you gotta watch like I had UCF in, in a lock with South Florida, and then I put him with Penn State, and then I put Penn State in another pick, um, and I think with Dallas or something. So you've you've gotta keep in mind what. I'm doing, and then you see a game where I only play it once. So the games I'm playing twice or for bigger, that's that's your cue to play them twice or bigger. You've got to understand teasers. I've been doing it since 1977, and I've kind of, and I'm a very highly analytical person, so I'm going to go, what's the best way to win? 
and I'm going to figure that out a long time ago, and then I'm going to, how do I make the most money with these teasers? So I figured out which team to take. Do I take, you know, last week, do I take Michigan in 15 or, or Penn State minus three? Um, and then once I figure it out, and then I love the game and I lock it, I go to myself, well, if I love the game so much, I need to bet it more than once. I mean, I've got it. I've got it. This is going to win. I, I know it's going to win. I want to play it again. I mean, it's a teaser. I need two teams, so I'll play it again. Now, I played it stronger, which is one way of kind of playing it twice, but I did put it in another teaser. And uh, uh, one quick thing about the line, I would love to meet the guy who bet Penn State, who bet on Michigan. Uh, the line went from nine and a half, well, it started at 11 and a half or 12, went down to seven and a half. I mean, and I already locked it. I mean, how many, you know, it's like, it's like if this is what it started with, the lock, that lock with UCF would have been 35 units. I mean, I, I always talk about the line creating the lock and the line creating the plays. I mean, I haven't been on Alabama much because they're laying 40 points, uh, and they just don't have that type of team that's going to score a lot. They, they run and play defense. Like I said, they're the 72 Steelers. They run and play defense. And so it's hard to lay 40 with a team like that because they're going to eat the clock. The other team's not going to score. Hard to go over on them, and it's hard to, to lay 35, 36 with them. So that's why I don't play Alabama much until they're come down to earth where they're lane seven or lane ten or something I can get under a touchdown and then I know they'll focus and they'll win. Um, but so that was the thing. So I again I I you know I ignore the money. In other words, if I love Penn State and they're at nine and I'm laying three or the drop to eight and a half and I lay two and a half or two, and then it goes to seven and a half. I don't get worried that well, why is the line going down? I mean, I'll check for an injury. Did, did you know Barkley get hurt? Did uh, you know the quarterback get hurt? I mean, what, what you know what's going on? Did they um, dismiss five players? And then I see no news, and then I gotta wonder who the idiot is who's betting on Michigan at nine down to seven and a half because that's absolutely. Those people shouldn't be betting because they have no clue of how to read a game. It's like a puzzle, right? I get all the games and then I'm I'm going through them, and I got you know two sheets. I got I got 40 games here, and I'm like, okay, this can no, that doesn't fit. No, okay, this fit. Here's a lock over here, and so I'm looking at Michigan, Penn State, and I go, Penn State's going to kill them. It's revenge. Michigan doesn't have a quarterback. So if you're looking at the logic behind the bet. Why the hell would you have taken Michigan from nine or even somebody was betting at eight and a half, taking Michigan at eight and a half or Michigan at eight and big money to move the line. I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. So again, those people are, you know, are just terrible betters because they don't have a clue. The thing I excel at is knowing the reason for the bet. Um, I'll tell people, people will email, well, I like this game, and I'll go, why? What, what, what makes you pick that team over this team? Not because I'm trying to be, um, mean about it, I'm just trying to, you give me a good reason why I should put my money on that team. Now, what I try to do here is give you good reasons why I'm picking the team, and then you get the picks, and then you see. You can see from my free. You can see from the Penn State. I gave you ten reasons why to bet Penn State, and then they win by twenty-nine points. So that's my logic. Um, so you understand when I give a pick, I'm telling you why I'm giving the pick. And if it doesn't make sense, that's fine. It, but normally it makes sense between all the methods I'm giving you why I'm betting it, and that's why I'm successful because. All the teams are black and white to me. I don't really have the favorite, and I'm just looking who's hot now. And I'm trying to bet the hot team, and I'm finding the weak teams and betting against them. So let's get on to two games this week. Uh, Miami's playing North Carolina, and Miami needs the game. Well, they're still going for the playoff. They're undefeated. Um, here's 
Miami's lane 20 over under a 50. So you look at Miami, they lost their running back, got a good quarterback, got a great defense. You look at North Carolina, Trubisky leaves, not that he was that good, but all of a sudden the new quarterback's not that good. And Fuentes is an offensive coach, so they don't have a strong defense. They got a strong offense, only they don't have a strong offense this year. So now you got a team with a weak offense and a weak, very weak defense playing a team like Miami who focus, they want to get to the playoff, they want to, they have a chance, they have a good coach, the quarterback's good, they just lost their running back, but I guarantee you a team like Miami has three, four stud running backs out of Florida, so I'm not worried that the next guy isn't very good. So my play is Miami minus 14, hopefully a little bit under if you can get them 19 or 18. And here's where the spread drops, right? If the spread were to drop to 15 and I can get it under 10, I'd bet a lot more on it. If I got it under 7, I'd bet a lot more on it. So here's where the spread determines the amount of the bet and the strength of the bet. 20 down to 14. If I, so if I can get it to 13 and a half, that's a strong bet because Miami will win the game. North Carolina doesn't, as I've explained, the way to get the upset is with defense. So Iowa State beats Oklahoma. Because Oklahoma doesn't have a good defense, Iowa State does. Iowa State's defense is very good. And, okay, Oklahoma put up 31, but Iowa State scores 38. So they have a pretty good offense, too. But they won because of their defense. They ran a bunch of screen plays Oklahoma couldn't figure out. But Oklahoma doesn't have a good defense. And the reason TCU is strong is they got a good defense. Iowa State's got a good defense. Kansas State usually plays well because they have a good defense. So you get the upset because of the defense. Arizona State upset Washington 17-7 to because of their defense. They're not – Arizona State's usually – like Arizona is just an offensive team that they, they got a running quarterback they run the option. So if you can defend it, you're going to beat them defensively. And if you can't, they're going to roll on you like last week. So getting into the numbers here. So let's look at, well, why do you like Miami? Well, their quarterback, Rozier, throws for 286 a game. They run for 186 a game. So they get 471 total offense. They score 33 a game and give up 18, and that includes playing Florida State. They still average 33. Um, North Carolina scores 21 a game. Now, this is a team that should score 40 a game with the coach and the offense they run. They're only scoring 21. And they give up 35 a game. This is what's appealing. Their quarterback, Chez Charette, he throws for 180 a game. That's ridiculous. I mean, because you got to understand, it's like Fuente's offense is pass happy and they put up a lot of yards. So that means they don't have much. The running's only 133. They only get 313 yards a game. So Miami, it's easy for them to put up a 30 or a 40. And with their defense not to give up a lot of points. So they, they give up 34. But North Carolina gives up 34, but Miami's given up 18. And that's important because you're looking at a team that they'll probably shut North Carolina down because North Carolina's not scoring a lot. North Carolina's what I call a weak team. They don't score a lot and they give up a lot on defense. So here comes Miami. They're going to score all day, but North Carolina's not going to do anything on Miami. So when I'm looking at a game, I go, well, should I go over or under? And I can't tell from this. Because of Miami's defense, they might shut out North Carolina or give up 10. They might score 30 to 40. So I'm looking at a score like 35 to 10. Well, over or under-wise, I'm not sure what to do with it. North Carolina could score a little more or could get shut out. Miami could score a little more because they're playing a defense that gives up 35. But they might not. They might run the ball and win... 28 to 3. So it could be high scoring, it could be low scoring. I don't know, but when I look at it, I go, well, Miami's going to keep them from scoring because of their defense and North Carolina's offense and their quarterback I don't like. And then you've got where Miami scores 33 against the defense that gives up 35. Chances are Miami's going to be able to put up at least 40 points. So when I'm looking at it, I'm going, well, they're probably going to win 40 to 10 ish. So therefore, 
I only have to lay 14. And in college, they run more plays, and they tend to want to run the score up. In the pros, they want to win by one. In college, they want to win by 50, because if Miami were to win this game 28-27, they'd drop at the polls. Well, they're not really that good. Look, they only beat North Carolina by one. But if Miami wins by 30, then it's, wow, look how good Miami is. The rankings are about money. That's it. They're the top team. They're on the TV. They're so more stuff. So it's, it all works that way. Take Miami Lane, the 14. Let's get into a few more stats here. So look at Miami's quarterback, Malik Rozier, 285 yards a game, 14 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. So they'll score, and he doesn't turn it over. That's how you kind of lose. You start throwing these pick sixes, and all of a sudden, you know, now you're struggling because the other team's got momentum, and the other team knows you're going to pass because you're down and you're fighting uphill. So if you can get the lead and just keep piling it up, then you can run or pass. They have to pass. Once it's a one-dimensional team, the game's over. So let's look at North Carolina's Chaz Surratt. 180 yards a game, seven touchdowns, only three interceptions, or only seven touchdowns and three interceptions. So there's not a lot of scoring going on, which we've already seen by the 21. Let's go to the numbers. My favorite thing. So we look at. So we look at uh, North Carolina first. As a home dog, they're two and one this year, three and five in a teaser. So you're subtracting six from the spread, and they're only three and five. On the other hand, if you go against North Carolina, they're five and zero oh if you bet against them at home. They're seven and one if you bet against them. The whole year. So if every game you bet against North Carolina, you're 88%. Well, let's look at Miami. Miami, road favorite, 2-0. and Overall, 4-1. and And that's because of the hurricane. And they had a bye. They missed like two games. So they're 4-1. and So they're good. But let's, well, you have to use 16 with Miami because they, you know, because of the hurricane. So Miami, let's look. 2016, so last year in the five games this year, overall Miami's 14-3, and 3, 82% in the teaser. 7-0 and 0 is a road favorite, which is the most important stat here. They go on the road as the favorite. They're supposed to win. They win. They win because of the defense. And we look at North Carolina as a home dog, 2-2. Two two. Bet against them as a home dog, 4-0. Bet against them at home, 8-1. So you can see North Carolina at home loses a lot. Um, and that was, you know, that includes, you know, last year's team, which is really good. So overall, they're still a lousy home team. And you got Miami, who's 7 and 0, is a road favorite. But more, and then more, and then more importantly, 14 and 3 overall. So they know how to win. They're laying a lot of points. And that's what you're looking for. So. You have a very strong team, very strong against the number, against the team that's very weak against the number. In the psychology of we're a road favorite and they love it, and North Carolina as a home dog doesn't like it, they lose as a home dog. So when you look at all the facts, better quarterback Miami, better coach Miami, um, better offense, better defense, have to have the game, and um, then I'll see, so add up all the factors. I'm betting two things. Miami 14 and 3, 7 0 is a road favorite. Second, Miami gives up 18 a game, scores 33, and North Carolina gives up 34. If North Carolina gave up 10 points, I wouldn't be playing this. Then this would be like playing against Florida State, and I took the under there. That was one of my locks, was Miami Florida State under, because I had two strong defenses playing each other, and that's what happened. But here, you don't. You have a weak defense, so I'm looking for the strong team to take advantage of the weak defense. That's a little new method I've been working on that's been very successful this year. Um, there's our. There's part one of the bet. Take Miami, lay the 14. Part two of the bet. Uh, I'm going to take I'm going to go with uh, 
California against Colorado. Colorado is laying three and a half, four points. Uh, over under is 52-ish. Well, let's look at the numbers. It's a Pac-10 game. So we've got California that just beat, uh, they beat the hell out of Washington State. They got seven turnovers. They played Arizona 45-44. They lost, but they played uh, they played a good game. And then you have Colorado, who, here's how I measure a team. They barely beat Oregon State. They've been kind of weak all year, but against Oregon State, they beat them like 36-34. you got to realize, Oregon State's terrible. Here's Oregon State's number. They score 21 and give up 43. Colorado plays them. And Colorado, you know, barely beat, you know, 36-34. Every team, Washington State, Washington, every team that's been playing Oregon State's winning by 40 because I keep playing against Oregon State. I didn't play because Colorado, I don't like their quarterback, and they're kind of weak. And this is what I'm going to term a weak favorite. So Montez, not crazy about him. They got a good running back in Lindsey, but they 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 pass for 214 a game and run for 168. 168 is good running from this type of offense, but 214 passing isn't, and they only get 382. But here's the problem: Colorado gives up 25 a game. Excuse me. You have to sneeze, but it yawned. So Colorado is not, they only average 25 a game. They give up 25 a game. So their defense, they lost three secondary guys to the pros. Last, last year, I would never do this. Last year, Colorado was gold to bet on. I remember locking them against Stanford. I think they won 10 to 5 or something. But we were getting nine points. So it was, I don't know, an easy lock. Um, but Colorado isn't isn't very good this year. It, it always comes down to the quarterback. That's why it's key to keep track of all these quarterbacks. And that's usually where you get burnt. They replace the quarterback, and then they bring in this new guy, and then nobody's seen him, and then he starts playing well. And you're going, oh, okay, well, the new guy's pretty good. But see, you don't get that in the pros too often. The pros, you know Brady's playing. You know, okay, I know Rodgers is hurt. I know Huntley's playing. I know what I'm getting. In college, you know with the better teams, but some of the teams, you, you know, they make, they're, they're bad. So you bet against them, and they change quarterbacks because they're so bad. And here you bet against them because of the quarterback. So that's what happens a lot in college. That's why it's, uh, you know, you kind of stay with the good quarterback. You know, he's playing, and you know what you got. Um, so I'm not crazy about Colorado. Their defense isn't terrible. It's not a 40-point defense, but it's a, 25 point defense and just I don't like the way Oregon State lit them up for 33 and then I don't remember what they did last week but it wasn't too impressive now Cal Cal scores 28 gives up 28 so Cal a little more explosive and a little bit more a little bit better offensively uh, quarterback Ross Brower throws for 250 a game, and they only run for 100. But you can they played a pretty tough schedule. I believe they played USC and Washington and Washington State. So this is why you got to look at the numbers of who they played because if they would have played, uh, they would have played Oregon State and then you know the Air Force and North Texas. Instead of USC, Washington, Washington State, their numbers would be 40 and 14, but they wouldn't be true numbers. So that's why you've got to look at who they play. So I give Cal extra for beating Washington State, gave them confidence, and then they played Arizona 45-44. And Arizona can score. So now I'm looking at Cal. They're, they're looking better. I watched the Washington State game, and I had Washington State and lost in that game because I didn't think Cal was that good, but now watching them going, yeah, they're pretty they're pretty good. The key to this bet is Colorado's quarterback's not very good. They don't score a lot. I have a team that's hot that just beat a Washington State, played Arizona tough. They're not going to get blown out here because Colorado couldn't blow out Oregon State. So if you follow the whole loop, you're going, Colorado's kind of weak. 
And here's Cal, who's a strong dog, who's now finding themselves, has confidence after beating Washington State. And they only lost the USC by 10 when USC, and they had turnovers, but now they're starting to play. Um, so they're a live dog against a weak favorite. And I talked about a weak favorite in the pros last week, uh, the Jets in Miami. And I said, Miami's a weak favorite. They don't score. See, there's a game where I bet it because of Cutler, the Jets, and had the Jets were a strong dog. And in the series, the Jets were a strong dog. And the Jets jump out 28-14. The game's over. The lock won. Jets getting you know, nine and a half. They're up 14 in the fourth quarter. Game's over. But the problem is here comes Matt Moore in now. Cutler gets hurt. And here's what I'm talking about. He comes in. Now they're a different team. Now you don't know who Miami is. Then you're wondering about the coach. Why aren't you playing Matt Moore, who can score more points in one quarter than the guy did in three games? So, again, that's the problem. So now you know Miami's got Matt Moore. And when Cutler goes back in, I'll go back to betting against Miami when they're the favorite. But we still won with the Jets in nine and a half. But it just shows you the quarterback's the key. So here you got a strong road dog against a weak favorite. And basically, I just I think Cal and nine's good. Let's get inside the numbers. Let's look at the quarterback. All right, so let's look at uh, Cal Ross Brower. Ross Bowers goes for two fifty a game. Twelve touches, ten interceptions. Keep in mind, against USC, threw a bunch, and against Washington. Didn't throw any against Washington State, and I don't think he threw any against Arizona, and they put up 45, or 44, and they lost 45-44. And that's okay against Arizona. has got a strong offense, and their defense is fairly weak. So I don't mind that they did that. Arizona's much better than Colorado. So look at Colorado's off, uh, quarterback, Steve Montez. Only throws for 214 a game. 12 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. And he hasn't played the big boys yet. So, I, I'm looking at a guy who's not a great quarterback. Uh, they do have a good running back, Colorado, in uh, Philip Lindsay. He's a 1,000-yard rusher. Then they just faced Arizona. Uh, so, they, they've seen running. And then, cal has got Trey Watson. Not as big of a runner, but he's not bad. So they're, they're fairly balanced. But they're going to pass, which is good because if they do get down, you can pass on Colorado. Like I said, they're giving up 25, and they lost three secondary guys to the NFL. So these guys are young. And, yeah, they're at home, but I still like that. I got Cal and 9.5, 10, 10 and a half, somewhere in that area against the team that's not going to blow you out because they're not that strong offensively. And they're not that strong defensively. Let's say they're playing Washington, who gives up 10 a game. That's what you got to worry about. Hell, they're going to shut them down. Washington gets a pick six, a punt return, a couple of touchdowns. It's 28 nothing, and you don't have a prayer scoring on Washington. You can't come back. Here against Colorado, they give up 25 a game. If they got down, they could come back. But I look at Cal to be explosive and play well and um, – they should be able to, to handle them. So let's look at the numbers. Phase two. So we've looked at we've looked at the points. We've looked at the quarterbacks. Cal this year, four and is a home dog. Three and is a road dog. Seven and if you bet on Cal. There's another reason. Colorado one and one is a home favorite. Three and four if I take Colorado. But if I bet against Colorado, 6-1, and one, and their only time they lost is they blew out Colorado State, and there was a couple touchdowns called back. And that was week one. So since then, you figured out Colorado, and they played their bad teams. So you've got Cal, 7-0, and oh, in a teaser. Colorado, 6-1, and one, if you go against them. Um, so there's another key to it. Let's go back to That's 2017 stats. Let's go to 2016. And here we have it again. So we got Colorado. We got Cal. Six and one is a road dog. 
16 and 3 if you took them and they six and one on the road eight and one is a home dog so when gal is a dog they're 14 and two overall they're 16 and three and if you go against them you're 13 and six uh, if you go against them as a road dog they're also six and one which shows you they play close games on the road where they cover but the other team you could bet both of them so that's usually they play close games which is what we want here Colorado here is seven and one is a home favorite and again that's what mostly last year they were six and oh as a home favorite and they had a much stronger defense a much stronger team a much better quarterback so you've got these this is the thing about college right you have this really strong Colorado team and then they lose the quarterback and they lose a couple three secondary guys to the NFL they don't replace them that well they don't have that strong of a quarterback so all of a sudden this is why it's hard to look at the trends uh, Kale's basically got the same team I don't I think they got the new coach last year I don't think it's his first year this year but it might be it could be his first year I think Justin Wilcox so anyway this year they're rolling so but if you include last year's team it wasn't as good they're 16 and 3 in the teaser so that's really what you're looking at right you're, you're how are, are they comfortable as a road dog yes Colorado comfortable as a home favorite yes but not gonna blow you out because of their quarterback the defense is okay um, McIntyre is a good coach and if they get a good quarterback you saw what he did last year uh, with a good quarterback um, so you got to keep that in mind so the quarterbacks the key and in this case the defense isn't as strong the quarterback isn't gonna roll up the points so you worry the only way you can lose is if Cal throws a lot of pick sixes or punt returns but the quarterbacks not a big one for that they played in big games they played USC Washington Washington State Cal and they played USC tough 20 I think they lost 30 to 20 or 20 lost by 10 and then they go and they beat Washington State so you take the Angus and they played Arizona tough losing 45 44 last week and again, you got more than 10. Or, yeah, I think you have, I think it's three and a half or four. You got nine and a half or 10. You're over a touchdown with a weak offensive team, Colorado. They're going to probably run the ball a little bit more. Um, but Cal can score, and they look a lot better now. I like their coast after beating a good Washington State team. So there you have it. Um, you got Miami, really strong in a teaser really strong defensively and a good quarterback and Cal who's playing really well beat Washington 7-0 and in the number against the number in a teaser this year going against a weaker Colorado not that Cal should be favored but you have a weak favorite here and that's what you're looking for is a strong dog or a weak favorite so when you got a team laying four and you go I don't think they can win this game so you got the other team at 10 now you've got to have a good team there's like UTEP playing Rice I don't care I don't want either team they both stink and uh, that's why sometimes it's harder to uh, when, when I talk about pocket aces pocket kings and a do seven offsuit or a three nine offsuit the three nine offsuit is Utah playing UTEP playing Rice two bad teams you have no idea what's going to happen the pocket aces and pocket kings is Miami is pocket kings they're at North Carolina they're playing a weak defense team they're a very strong team it's a good matchup that's what you're looking for and that's what I look for each week where's the pocket aces the pocket kings and these are the different methods I use to get there and you can see I'm going wow okay the the points aren't great the Colorado doesn't give up 40 but North Carolina does and How's the quarterback? How are they in the trend? Well, you can see both teams are very hot this year. They're both like 85% or greater, Miami and California. So they're both uh, on a roll and, and hot, and that's what you want to play with. So like this year, Florida State's terrible this year, so I wouldn't be jumping on Florida State. Notre Dame's hot this year. It's funny. 
there's three or four teams that were terrible last year. TCU, Notre Dame, Michigan State, just to name three of them. And guess who's, like, undefeated? TCU, Notre Dame, Michigan State lost once to Notre Dame. So the real good teams, the real good coaches, when they have a bad year, and I stated this, I think, week one in my, in my um, video here, watch out for those teams because – after a bad year, they get kind of pissed off, and they just, you know, they're focused, they're embarrassed, the team's embarrassed, the coach is embarrassed, they fix it, they get up to play, and they play very, very well. Now, you watch, you know, Michigan's going to have trouble this year. They're going to lose to Ohio State. They're going to lose to Wisconsin because they don't have a quarterback. It's the key, right? So when you have that, look at Michigan next year, they'll – hopefully have a better quarterback. The key will be the quarterback. They bring in a good quarterback with that defense. Hopefully the line gets better, the running gets better, and then we'll be betting Michigan a lot next year. But this year, I mean, they're just, you know, they're just, you, you can only go as far as your quarterback is, and their quarterback basically is not really good. So that's it. Um, one other little note. You know, everybody's on Arizona State. Be careful this week. I know logic would say, oh, Arizona State, they beat Washington and Washington State. You know, they're going to kill USC. USC lost 49-10 to 10 or whatever to Notre Dame. Teams that lose like that get awfully pissed off, i.e. Penn State last year. Penn State lost to Michigan 49-10, to 10, right? And what did they do the next week? I don't know. I think they beat Ohio State or somebody because they didn't lose the rest of the year. They got pissed. They were embarrassed. And they and they have talent. And then they won. They haven't lost since. Well, they lost the Rose Bowl. Um, that's what you look for. So it's easy to say Arizona State's going to win. USC is going to be really pissed off. And the question is going to be the matchup of Darnell who I don't know why everybody thinks he's so great. He's not. Um, he's just that. He came in and nobody knew what he was, so he did. A, he won a few games. And then everybody's like, oh, hey, he's great. Uh, no, as soon as you get film on the guy and you know what he does. See, the, they're great in the first couple of games because there's no film on them. Once they play three or four games and you see, oh, he likes to roll to his right. Okay, we're not going to let him. And then all of a sudden... He's, he's normal again. So be careful with that game. Don't get too excited on Arizona State. Uh, this will be a good test if they hold them, you know, if they win this game 20 to nothing or 20 to 3, uh, then you can say Arizona State is for real, their defense, you know, and it looks good. I'm not – actually, they beat – they didn't beat Washington State. They beat Utah and uh, – they beat Utah and Washington. Utah had quarterback problems and a lot of turnovers. So, got to see that. But that's what you're looking for. So, anyway, keep your eye on the injuries. Quarterback's the key. Revenge is the key. If it's Penn State, you know, against Michigan, it was high revenge, which played a huge factor. Penn State ran it up. They weren't going to pull a West Virginia and get up 30 and then – let the other team score 20 in the fourth quarter like, like West Virginia did. Um, so anyway, that's what we're looking at. So um, off you go. you got Miami of Florida laying the 14, hopefully a little bit less than 14. You can get it under 14. It's even better. You get it under 10, it's a great bet. But watch the line. When you see, like I gave you Penn State last week, right? And I was giving it to you at 9.5 down to 3.5 or 3, and I said – you got to play that teaser six and a half to get it to three. But when it hits seven and a half, when you see that, when I'm giving you Penn State and that line is at nine, nine and a half, and it goes to seven, and all we got to do is lay one point, why do you think the, the, the UCF was a lock? Because they were laying one to Navy. All they had to do was win the game. There's no freaking way they weren't going to win the game. You don't have to worry about points with a team like UCF. That's a lock. I mean, when I saw that spread of laying seven, I was I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was a lot of sevens last week. I was hitting all over the place. That's why I liked it. So this week I've got 
four locks in college. I think I'm going to have a lock in the pros. The pros are so hard to lock now. Um, four locks. I got two, four, six, seven. Uh, I got like 13 games and one under. It's it's just now I'm locked in because I, with all my methods, as soon as I see the game, I already know who I'm going to. I already know. I'm telling you, Miami, North Carolina stinks this year. Here's Miami. Boom. Colorado. And, and, and I don't a lot of the times you're watching how they play the other team. Colorado barely beat Oregon State. Okay, they're not going to blow out Cal if they barely beat Oregon State. Now, had they beat Oregon State 42 to nothing like all the other teams are doing, I wouldn't be as aggressive here. But because they didn't, that's the key. So keep watching who they play and how they play. And we we'll go from there. Um, and that's it. So www.teacherking.com. Big week this week. I've been on fire in college. Uh, I've got to be close to 80% on my picks in college. Uh, my teasers have been hot. I've been hitting my locks. Um, I did lose a lock last week, um, but it was a lesser lock, Utah and West Virginia. So I lost the lock, but I won the big lock, UCF and um, South Florida. And then... I hit the 11 just because I don't call it a lock. I mean, Penn State and UCF was still 11 unit play. So, I mean, don't get hung up on is it a lock or not. Uh, I should have locked it. I mean, there's no, really no reason I didn't, but Penn State and UCF was played as 11 units just as the lock was. So, kind of, I went, you know, two, two teaser locks and one, and I lost one teaser lock. If you want to go that way. But uh, it was a huge week. And so play the stronger games in a couple of teasers. If I'm giving you four locks, play a four or five team teaser. Get some odds on it. Play a three team teaser with the four locks. I mean, that's what I do when I'm in Vegas. I think I got four locks. I don't even play that many two team teasers. I'm going to play a three team teaser because I get odds. And I love the three or four games or the five games that I got. So why play a two team and lay. Well, at William Hill, you don't lay any juice, so it's more in the pros, but you just pound it. You just pound a two, and then you get odds. You're going to play all three games anyway. Play a three-team teaser. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, what I, I, that's what I will do when, uh, when I'm in Vegas. And, uh, well, I do it all the time, but, I mean, when I go to Vegas, I play. I get more into the four, five, six-team teasers because I got so many games I can pick there. All right, everybody. Well, have a good week. www.teaserking.com. Four college locks. At least 11 plays that are all pretty strong. Um, what can I say? It's just it's very, you can see all the different methods I use. So you have a good understanding of why I'm playing it. But as more teams fall into these where the quarterback's good, the, the numbers are good, they're 7-0 this year, they're 83%. I'm going against an 80%. So the more start jumping up, that's why I have so many plays. You just go conference to conference. You go, oh, yeah, I got two in the Big Ten. I got two in the Pac-10. I got two in the in the Big 12. I got three in the SEC. And, you know, before you know it, you, you got 10, 11 games, and boom. So anyway, have a great weekend. Um, www.teaserking.com. Um, I'll do the same thing as I did last week if you're interested. Uh, instead of 135 for everything, you can pay me uh, one, 100 and I'll give you all the games, uh, all the locks, pros and college for 100 if, you, if you're interested in that. Otherwise, I'm getting a lot of college activity and a lot of lock activity, which is great. And I don't, I don't blame them, but just for 25 more, you get all the pros. And I've been good in pros. It's just it's a little harder because it's just really cloudy. But I'll talk to you about that in my pro, t pro uh, video that I'm doing now. Okay, everybody, have a great week. www.teaserking.com. Thank you.